Hey everyone, I'm Chelsea from Chelsea Makes. I am a maker, a miniaturist, and most recently I was lucky enough to be a contestant on season three of NBC's crafting competition show, Making It. I love miniatures. I've loved miniatures since I was a kid, and coming back to it as an adult has really been an amazing way for me to explore different design ideas, techniques, patterns, textures, you name it, because it doesn't take a lot of material, it doesn't take a lot of time, and anyone can do it, I promise you. For today's craft demo, we are going to be making a miniature library using only household items. Included in this demo is an SVG file, which you can use to cut out the templates for the books on a Cricut or Silhouette type machine. If you don't have access to one of those machines, don't worry. You can easily print out the PDF version and cut it out by hand using an X-Acto knife or similar blade. So now that you know what we're making, let's dive in so that you can make your very own miniature bookshelf. So let's go over the materials you need. Once again, you'll need some sort of container. For this version, I'm using Altoid tin. You'll also need paper. Cardstock is best, usually around two sheets, eight and a half by 11. White is usually best for the pages, but you can choose any colors you like for the book bindings. You'll also need some beads or anything you want to use as additional decoration. A ruler, a craft knife, and a cutting mat if you're cutting everything by hand. Paint, it can be spray paint or regular paint, whatever you want to do to change the color of your library. Some small additional details, found objects are best for decorating. And not pictured, you will also need some glue and some small pieces of wood or cardboard to make the shelves. If you're gonna be using a cutting machine, go ahead and get that set up. Open the SVG file and upload it to the cutting program of your choice. You'll notice on the left there are book covers and on the right are the pages for each book. You'll see there are two layers. The top is going to remain a cut layer and the bottom we're going to switch to score. Perfect. I like to go ahead and make sure I attach everything so that both the score and cut layers remain exactly where they're meant to be. Then we'll hit make it. At this point you want to double check the size and dimensions of your project so that you know you're inserting the right amount of material into your machine. Here I'm swapping out for the score wheel, which is going to be the first step in our project. This is going to score the book binding and make it easy for us to get a nice clean fold. Once the scoring portion of your project is complete, we'll swap out the scoring wheel for a fine point blade. This is going to cut all of the pages of our books as well as the bindings. You will need to repeat this process if you're looking for bindings in a different color other than the pages of your book. If you're cutting your project by hand, there's a PDF version of the same SVG file. Print it on any at-home computer and use a craft knife to cut along the lines. Once everything is cut out of your project, we're going to use any sort of fine point tool to lift the cut pages from your cutting surface. Because we have several different sizes of books, as you lift pages, you're going to want to make sure you're keeping them organized and all same page sizes together. They coordinate with the book binding to the left of each row. Take one set of book pages and binding and look for the score lines that are in the center. You'll see that there are two, one on each side of the binding. We're going to crease the book binding along those edges and that is going to be the outside of our book. If you're doing this by hand, it's sometimes easy to use the back side of your scoring knife to create a crease. Bend along that edge using a flat edge, a ruler, if you need to. You can also add additional detail on the book binding 
using any sort of paint, lettering, tape that you like to give it some extra detail. Next, you'll take all of the pages of your book and make sure that they are nice and evenly aligned. At this point, before you glue everything together, you can also add some additional details, adding pictures and words to the pages, or you can leave them blank and fill them in later. Do a dry fit, and when you're ready, apply a small amount of glue along the edge of the pages and insert them into the book. Give it a nice squeeze to make sure everything's together and tight, and repeat the process with the remaining books. Next, we'll add some shelves to the container of our choice. As I mentioned, I'm using an Altoid container, and I'm gonna use my ruler to measure the length and depth of the container so that I know what size to make my shelves. I'm using a scrap piece of wood, a small piece of balsa that's easy to cut by hand, and I'm measuring out those dimensions for my shelves directly onto the material. Don't forget to measure twice and cut once. I have wasted a lot of very good material by not following said advice. Once you're sure of your dimensions, you can go ahead and cut them out. I like to do a dry fit before I glue anything to make sure I don't have to make any changes to the dimensions or sanding the edges. It also gives me the opportunity to realize that this would look better if the shelves were double thickness. So if you're using a material that's a little bit thin, feel free to double stack it to give it a little bit more weight. I'm going to remove them before painting anything so that I don't accidentally scuff any of my material. Give your paint a really good shake, go outdoors where you have good ventilation, and the hardest part of this entire project, wait a significant amount of time for drying between each coat. That is something I will forever struggle with. Once your container and shelves are completely dry, you can gather your remaining materials, your books, your glue, any of your additional decorations, and begin the most fun process of decorating and putting together your bookshelf. Because I want my shelves to be evenly spaced within the container, I'm going to start by determining which of the books I have is the largest. I'm gonna take the largest book and place that approximately in the center of the container that way I know all of my shelves will fit each and every one of my books. I'm taking a look at the shelves and determining which one is the best outward facing side and then doing a dry fit once more to figure out exactly where I want those shelves to land. The bottom one's looking good. Sometimes you'll need to just push and pull a little bit until it's exactly right. Well, we're not really going for perfection here, but whatever looks good and doesn't drive you crazy. When I'm happy with the placement of the bottom one, I'll go ahead and apply a really small amount of glue to the sides and edges of my shelf. I like to pour glue on a side separate piece of material and use a toothpick, or in this case a coffee stirrer, to apply the glue carefully. Again, I've determined which side was the least attractive and that is the side I'm gluing to the inside of my bookshelf. Once you've got the first shelf in place, use the dry side of your toothpick to scrape away any excess glue. This will make sure that your books don't stick to the shelves and that you have a nice clean edge. Using that same book, I'm going to place it again into the shelf to figure out the exact placement of the second shelf. Using the same technique to apply glue, a nice thin layer to the backs and the sides of the shelves. My go-to glue for miniatures is usually Aileen's Quick Dry, but you can also use hot glue or any type of glue that you prefer. I just have not a lot of patience, so something that dries quickly is what's ideal for me. Press that shelf into place and just use your fingers to align it. Again, we're not going for perfection here. It's looking good, so I'll use the back end of my stick to just clean off any of the excess glue. 
You can use your fingers to just push and pull those shelves, make sure they're straight, cleaning up any extra bits. And if you really want to be fancy, once this glue is dry, you can give those shelves another coat of paint. But I think I'm just going to get into decorating. So I have all these beads, and I brought some dried flowers in from the yard. This bead is tall enough to be a, a vase, but I want to make sure it's going on a shelf that can fit some tall flowers. So I'm doing some quick measuring, just breaking off the flowers, seeing what works, and you can make adjustments as you go. Even if you're not super into miniatures, I think these shelves are a really fun way to show off the things that you care about in your life. I love flowers and nature, so that's of course what's going on my shelf. But think about the things that you like and love and find ways to introduce those into your world. If you love art, make a tiny sculpture out of leftover Play-Doh. If you're into cooking, find a tiny bottle cap to be a mixing bowl. There's endless ways that you can customize these shelves to show off your personality, and I think that's what's so great about using household found objects. I like to play around with the books. I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna put them together, but I'm actually not gonna be gluing anything down. And I think that's fun because you can constantly change it. Now, of course, if this is going in a high traffic area, you wanna secure them somehow, either with some double stick tape, zots, or a little bit of glue. But I constantly like to mix, mix things up and switch them around. So if you're like me, you can leave things unadhered. That way you can change it up as often as you like. There's endless ways to customize the books as well. I mentioned adding some tape on the book binding, but you can also paint on them if you use watercolor. You can add gold leaf if you want a nice fancy little gold shelf. You can also use magazine clippings instead of paper. Anything that has color and texture, you can add that into your space in any way you like. And don't get me started on the endless types of miniatures that you can purchase for your shelves because I have gone down many a rabbit hole trying to find all of the miniature items. Yes, I like to make my own, but even I can't resist some of the amazing miniatures you can find out there from makers all around the world. So use this as your opportunity to showcase what you love and create just for the sake of creating. Have fun with it, and don't be afraid to be a little silly.